Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Welcome to Lease Cake Live. My name is Michelle Benjamin. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Lease Cake, and we're here for another amazing session with some friends from Dave's Hot Chicken. And before we get started, uh, a few housekeeping items. We are recording this. We are happy to share it with you if you'd like to watch it again or in the future, share it with a friend. Um, and if you have any questions, we would love to see them. So send them over through the Q&A and we'll keep an eye on them. We would love for this to be interactive. So don't be shy. Taj loves answering your questions at any time of the presentation. You don't have to wait till the end. And with that, I will pass it over to Taj. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate the kind introduction as usual. We are excited to share with you Lee's Cake Live. You know, as, as I've always said, we're in the education business. I founded the company probably about six and a half, seven years ago. And at Lee's Cake, it's really important for our customers to share their stories, fascinating origins, where they're headed. And it's it's very special. So also, also including advice across the industry. And we definitely want to keep it interactive, as Michelle said. So we encourage your questions. Use the Q&A uh, feature within Zoom. So my name's Taj. I'm the founder of Lease Cake. And we're coming at you from Winter Park, Florida, just a little north of Orlando. It's not the, not the uh, theme parks and the convention side that you all might be familiar with. But this is not a backdrop. This is our Cake Quarters. And we're really excited to to share that some of the best conversations happen around the kitchen table, as, as you may know. So true to form, we will be serving Dave's right after this webcast. Hold me to that. So we serve tens of thousands of locations and hundreds of brands across the ecosystem for franchise and corporates. We're real estate and location management made easy for restaurants and service-based retail. We reduce real estate risk, protect your locations, so you can focus on growing your business and frankly, really even your legacy. We've got hundreds of people today registered, super excited. Dave's is a really fascinating brand, tons of interest in that growth, and we'll be unpacking that today. So folks from all across North America, franchisees, franchisors, fast casual, quick serve, um, even within the fitness space and automotive. So this, Webcast today is about how Dave's Hot Chicken leverages relationships and people for rapid franchise growth. And it always starts with the greatest of people coming together. And today, I'd like to introduce you to you our first franchisee of Dave's Hot Chicken. He's been on the founding team and he started in San Diego with the first Dave's location. I think it was May of 2020. And their group has opened up 10 locations. And he was hired as the director of operations of Dave's and is the COO, and also a franchisee of Dave's. Welcome, Daryl Pangolinen. Thank you, Taj. Thank you, Michelle. Honored to be here and excited to share our growth and where we've come from. Absolutely. Wonderful to have you, Daryl. And it's also my pleasure to introduce you today, the Chief Development Officer at Dave's Hot Chicken, where our guest oversees the company's development strategies and also a franchise owner and CEO of, of her own company. So prior to this, she held the position of the president of international and the chief development officer at Blaze Pizza for something like seven years, also a customer of ours. Welcome, Carolyn Kennedy. Hi, thank you so much, Taj. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Well, I just, I just want to say, you know, it is kind of like semi lunchtime here on the East Coast. Folks are out on the West Coast and I just finished a medium Dave's and I'm working my way up to a to a reaper, just for the record. And I've got a I've got my my milkshake just in case the heat index goes way over and above. Good, good plan. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so let's start with you, Carolyn. It's just tell us where you started, um, a little bit, you know, the background of what your role is, and uh, and we'll just kick it off from there. Sure. Um, so May of 2020, um, that was important for Daryl when they opened their first store. It was important for me, too. That's when I became a franchisee with Dave's. Um, I had been with uh, Blaze Pizza for seven years and took a little bit of time off. And Bill Phelps, our CEO, was really after me to get involved with Dave's. And so I became a franchisee. And uh, then I didn't uh, become the CDO until January of uh 21, when they were looking for someone, and I told them I would help out temporarily. Well, I'm still here, you know, four years later, um, I've got two restaurants open, and it's been a really, really great experience to be on both sides 
um, a franchisee and also part of the franchise company. Well, that's that's great. All right. So Daryl, your background, and we will start to unpack reputation on the people side. So I was part of the first franchise group for Dave's Hot Chicken. I came in as the director of operations. We opened our first restaurant in May 2020 in Pacific Beach, San Diego. We were able to take Dave's out of the founders group out of Hollywood and introduce it to now the world as it started in Pacific Beach. And, you know, I came in as the director of operations, grew into my role as the chief operating officer for our franchise group. And I'm also a franchisee for Dave's Hot Chicken. Blessed to be here and can't wait to grow some more. Wild. So now you've got to share some of those stories about lines around the door or, or you know, around the store. Like, Give us a little bit more of, of, of that very, very beginning days, Daryl. Yes. So, you know, we opened up two months after the world shut down because of COVID. And, you know, there was a lot of curiosity, anxiety of what it's going to be like to open in a pandemic. And the people responded. The love for Dave's, they showed itself right out the gate. Our grand opening, the line was not just wrapped around the store, but down the street blocks. And that wasn't with six feet social distancing that was just people excited to be out and excited to try this new brand this new concept that we introduced them in san diego and it was a four-hour experience it was if you were at the back of the line it took you two hours to get to the register and then it took you two hours to get your food you know it, it was our first uh franchise location and so we were still testing it out we didn't know what type of response we were going to get uh but we loved the response that we saw and uh, it's helped us to where we're at now. That's that is wild. So yeah, I I want to add on to that for that Pacific Beach opening. Um, I went to that, and I, I get goosebumps right now thinking about it because I went and saw the guests all lined up and wanting a Dave's, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't wait to get my store open. I just couldn't wait. I was so excited. And I was asking people um, in line, I'm like, well, what made you even come? How do you even know about Dave? So like social media, I see it all the time on Instagram. We couldn't wait to come try it. So I couldn't wait to, to get my store open. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's definitely that, that people centric approach. I mean, that's the theme of this. Um, obviously I think you, you both share a passion in growing amazing teams building, you know, uh, rapport, trust with your customers. Um, talk a little bit about that, Daryl. Like what, you know, what's, what's the secret sauce for you to be growing? Like how many states are you in? Let's start there. Well, we are in 12 different, well, we're expanding to 12 different states, our group alone uh, wow. throughout the U.S. And, you know, in, in the beginning it, for us, right, it was, well, this is a vessel that we get to use um, to carry out our mission. And our mission is to change people's lives with a purpose. And we truly, you know, people say it, but we truly live it and we believe it. And that's something that's really helped us from the beginning to, to where we're at now. And that will continue to carry us. You know, our, our corporate team, they say the chicken is our superpower. Well, our people is our health. And that's what gets us to grow. It's important for us to take care of our people who in turn take care of our guests and turn them into fans. So, you know, from the beginning to where we're at now and everything that drives us moving forward, it's it's really people first. And, you know, we've turned, for like myself, from being the director of operations to a franchisee, we've taken someone who joined us just as a shift manager, worked her way up to a general manager, right. and is also a partner for us in one of our outer territories. And so we turn people into franchisees and that helps us, you know, Dave's is our vessel and we really use it to, to really change people's lives. So it didn't, wasn't just a light bulb for you guys to just say, Hey, let's start doing this. It sounds like you were pre-wired for this, Daryl. Like it's something we believe to the core. Uh, you know, when I signed, when I signed with Dave's and I say this proud, it, it may sound like um crazy, right? Cause I signed with Dave's not knowing what Dave's was. I signed with Dave's purely on the conversations that I had with my partners. It's it's really, you know, it wasn't, people looked at it as a risk, but for me, it was comforting because I trusted the partners that I am with now, even before Dave's, we opened our first location. So 
you know, and that that trust that's instilled from the top that the trust is our glue to everything we do. Trusting that we have each other's backs, trusting we're always going to be honest with each other and trusting we're all going to carry our weight. So trust is a big part of who we are. And that's what helps us grow. So, yeah, people is what it's about. Wow. That is so reassuring because, I mean, you are walking the walk and talking the talk. It's more than just posters, right, in your in your hallways, I'm sure. Uh, very, very inspiring. Um, so, so Carolyn, do you want to, you want to add to that? Cause I'm sure you're seeing some amazing, uh, history, right. With what you and Bill did and then your role at blaze. I mean, you're probably carrying a lot of that with you and reinforcing yeah. it. Yeah. I would say, um, first of all, um, Daryl's group, their mission, um, changing people's lives. It's actually the same mission as Dave's hot chicken, chicken corporate, uh, Bill Phelps is very much, um, behind, helping people aspire to what they think they can't achieve. And we're doing that through Dave's Hot Chicken. Um, and so from a corporate standpoint, that is also our mission. But from my franchise uh, company, um, you know, it, we have like a family, it's a family business. Um, my daughter and son-in-law uh, operate the two restaurants. And we look at the people that work for us as part of our family. And we're here to help them uh, grow and be able to um, achieve things that they've never been able to achieve before. So that idea of changing people's lives and being a family is really throughout Dave's as a company and Dave's franchise partners. We all are very aligned on that goal and that mission. So it's exciting. It's really great. Well very nice to hear the uh i think the investment and the time you spend on on that people side elaborate on what you mean by changing people's lives as franchisees i mean you're you're doing more than just selling the rights to open up a dave's yeah well i think it's more you know we partner only with multi-unit franchisees so we partner with very experienced operators it really goes down to the level below that, where, like Daryl said, they have a shift manager that's now participating in ownership. That's the piece. It's it's aspiring to have, um, you know, entry level, entry level people within Dave's Hut Chicken grow to really great positions um, where they have the monetary, you know, ability to really buy a house you know, or go to school and all of those things. So we're really, really focused in on that. Nice. What's your, how do you translate that to meeting with all of your franchisees? I mean, how many locations do you have now, Carolyn, or, or like currently, and then your growth pipeline? For Days Hot Chicken, we've had 218 restaurants open. Yeah. We're hoping to get past the eight, like we opened 80 last year, we're hoping to get to 80 plus this year. So we have another 35 to 50 to open this year, but we are on pace to do over 110 next year. And, um, you know, like I said, it really comes back. Let's talk about relationships and partnerships. We have selected the best of the best in this industry. We only bring in multi-unit operators that are very, very good at what they do. And they have the same mindset of wanting to offer additional opportunities to their current group of people. Let's say they're a large Taco Bell franchisee and they've, they've built out, but they have all these people that work for them that still want to grow. So they bring in another brand to keep growing their people. And those are the only fran kind of franchisees we partner with. I like that. And that makes sense because I think we were talking before we, we kicked this off the top of the hour about the increased competition. I mean, the availability of space is so challenging. Uh, the ability for you to find really strong multi-unit operators and who know that you know that they have a choice, right, to choose you or countless others. But it, it would seem to me that you have this very modern outlook to combat 
risk and and competition. I mean, do you see your your people approach and your technology investments? Are those are the things that help you differentiate to find those best in class multi unit operators? Well, I think um, we've been very lucky because from day one, Dave's had a very good hype around it, and there was a lot of awareness around Dave's yeah. and great multi unit operators are always looking for a good brand that gives them a good return. And we are that brand. So we don't have to go looking. <laughs> we just filter people out. <laughs> we just, you know, we just, we make sure that the people that are interested are yeah. a very good fit for our brand yeah. and that we're the right brand for them. You know, it goes both ways. Um, we want to make sure it's a good um, partnership for both of us, but Again, we've been very lucky. Dave's is very um, sought after. Um, well, you know, Shannon, our uh, vice president of development, has sold out the country. So uh, now we're focused on um, international. But, I heard. Yeah, we're we're it's it's a it's a great place to be. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, yeah. All right. So so then, Daryl, let's before we talk about international and and the rapid expansion. That we can probably spend you know several hours on. Uh, what's your typical day to day like as it relates to interfacing with the franchisor, uh, best practices, operations, being empowered, and the like? Share about that. Yeah, so you know, being in different markets, different cities, different states, it's important, you know, from a brand's perspective and for our group to be consistent through and through. Um, and the product to full-blown operations. And in every every market that we're in, we actually have operating partners who are local to those markets. And tapping into what Carolyn was saying, we have like the best of the best from other concepts and other brands, multi-unit operators who come in and you know they, they test. They test what they're seeing and hearing on social media. And they, they try to see what Dave's is like and what it's all about. And I remember one of my partners sharing his story before, you know, he met with us. He wanted to go to Dave's. He flew out, checked out Dave's in Dallas. And then he was like, man, this is a great experience. I've never, like he, the, the team members were extremely, the, the atmosphere, the energy, everything was just, it, it enlightened him. And so he said, I'm going to go try this in Michigan. And he went and it was the same thing. And it turns people into believers from what they're seeing on social media. And so for, for us, that's, it makes us feel good, right? Because our vision, our goal of bringing that consistency throughout uh, our entire company and throughout the state and internationally, it's the, our team members are living it. Uh, they're breathing it. And it's that modern approach to, to the business, right? You hear people uh, in my career, I've heard people say, run the business like you own it. Well, we're making them own it. <laughs> they, they become owners, you know? And so there's a different way they approach their day-to-day. And so really interacting with our partners, our operating partners in the different markets, and then interacting with the franchisors, uh, the, this team, we, you know, we had the benefit of seeing Dave's grow at the corporate level, seeing their team grow, uh, you know, from the beginning of dealing with Bill Phelps, our CEO, and Dave Kapushian himself, the founder, you know, working hand in hand to, to really see how we're going to scale this out and listening not just to our guests, but Bill and his team do a really good job of listening to the franchisees. And Bill had a monthly call talking to Carolyn about it where uh, Bill opened the line of communications to the general managers of the restaurant. This is the CEO who makes himself directly accessible to all the general managers in the company. It wasn't owners on that call. That was general managers that the CEO was communicating with, hearing what they're going through, the battles, the challenges that they're going through in the day-to-day -day life in the restaurants, and then taking that, doing the due diligence, the research and development with this team, and taking that into an approach where we're gonna launch it now through the system to make things better. And that communication, that trust between franchisor and franchisee, it's it's something I've never experienced in my entire career. Our, our corporate team, they do a great job with having those communication lines open. And that's a big part of our growth. Wonderful. I've had the pleasure of speaking with CEOs of of uh, really large multi-unit operations as well as other leaders on within franchisors. And without question, 
the unilateral statement is I want to be like Dave's Dave's is doing it right. Dave's is one of the best franchisors I've ever had a conversation with ever had a business relation with. So I think this Testament, it speaks, you know, so loudly because you both use the word modern, right? A, a modern approach, a, a modern take. And how do you, how do you change lives creating this sense of trust and ownership of, of trust? I think that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Um, I don't know, Carolyn, you want to put any icing on that cake? Um, well, I, I would just add that uh, Daryl's uh, group is, um, they're, they're near and dear to me. I, I love these guys. Yeah. You, you can't help but love them the way that they operate um, and the way that the, the partnership with us, they're just the best. And they're the best at, you know, what they do with all their people and what they do within their um, organization. And just to let you know, we have a hard, fast rule that we won't let franchisees go and develop um, where they don't already operate. So what they did so they could expand is they partnered with local operators. And I mean, great local operators, operators that could have um, qualified on their own without them. But so we've got these this great group that's expanding their awesomeness around the, the the country in different states with other really great operators. It is a, a recipe for success. It is a recipe for success. Yeah. That, that is really good to hear. Uh, and it's a, there's a related question that just came in. Uh, thanks for bringing those questions in, by the way. So would it be safe to say, well, you answer this question, like what's the most important factors when you select a new location um, from a franchisor's perspective? Um, why don't you start with that? Well, I'll start with it. Um, even from a franchisee perspective, the, the real estate you choose is the number one most important decision you're going to make. Because if you gaff on that, if you miss on that, you can't out operate it, you can't out market it to make it better. All right. So having said that, that's the other reason we only partner with franchisees that are already operating in a market. They know the market. They understand the real estate. They already have the connections with the developers and the landlords. To go into a market cold, you're going to get bad results. So, but what are the key characteristics you're looking for? First of all, you're going to want to go where other people are being, you know, successful, where there's some other fast casuals. You want to go where there's some daily needs. You know, um, there's grocery stores people are going to, or they're going to the gyms or whatever it is. Um, uh, you know, and then demographics is interesting for us at Dave's because it's all over the board from the size of the population to the income level. It, it's all over the board. So I can't even say what's most important there, but I do know if you're going to, you go to the places where our kind of guests are already going, right? There's Chipotle's, there's Cava's, there's Jake Shacks, there's Five Guys. We're going to go in those same areas. Right. Right. So now that you've expanded into 12 different states, Daryl, anything you want to add to that? I mean, it sounds like you've got local partners that are working. I mean, when when did that click for you guys? Yeah, so Carolyn's absolutely correct. You know, our operating partners in every market, they know the market. They've been operating in that market, so they understand. And then now it's learning, you know, who our target audience is for Dave's because maybe for their concept that they're currently with, it's not the same demographic that Dave's has. We're still learning our demographic. I, I remember where it used to be hard 18 to 30 or 35, and then that number keeps growing into 40. And, it, you know, it's it's really just understanding, you know, when you go into these markets, you check out the Chipotle's, the Shake Shacks, and you see who are the guests that are going in there. And are these the same guests that we are going to be seeing in Dave's? Those guests are also our labor pool. And so it's it's important to understand the area and, and knowing who's coming into that area already, who's living there, and then you know the best real estate not just for today but ten years down the road, right? You're it, it's a partnership. It's something that you're going to be with not just for today but for the future. So real estate's a huge plus for us. And then understanding in the area where people are going, what uh, which people are going, and are those our guests that are that we're seeing in our restaurants currently? Yeah. So you're, you're really connecting a lot of random dots because, 
you certainly want to understand, let's say, the competition, but they they don't really compete with you. But when you said they're also your labor pool potentially, right? I think that's that's a fascinating take on it. It's the first time I've really kind of heard that theme uh, because you definitely have a following, right? Without question, people are passionate. So so why not? Um, is there a sense, um, Carol? Maybe you can answer this this question that just came in on um, round numbers of, of franchisees that you have in, uh, let's say, the, the the lower 48 contiguous U.S.? Yeah, we have uh, 65, 65 groups. 65. Okay, got it. That might have been somebody up in Alaska when they said the lower 48. So there, there might be an Alaska development. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alaska is open, but... Uh... I... <laughs> That's, that is wild. Cool. Um, all right, so... Let's talk about international, uh, Carolyn. So I know that you've had some really good success. And, and I, I mean, have you saturated the U.S.? Is that what you were alluding to? And now you're yes. expanding internationally? Okay, got it. So international markets, what's your what's your priority in terms of uh, countries or continents? So um, I'll just tell you where we are now. We're in Canada. And we actually started in Canada back in May of 2020. Also, we were in the middle of the pandemic and open there. Um, that was interesting. All of the training was done via Zoom. <laughs> Can you imagine opening a new store via Zoom? Well, we did it. Um, and then um, we've been in the Middle East for the last three years. We're in three different countries there and still expanding. And we just signed a deal for the UK and Ireland, hoping to get our first store open in December. So we're really excited about that. But all, of, all three of those areas um, happened organically. You know, we weren't looking to go there. We just had a very good uh, partner come to us and say they were interested. And that was the key. You know, it's all about the partnership. Now, moving forward, we really feel like um, Asia is our next uh, place we'd like it look at, to look at. I actually am engaged with a group right now that we're meeting uh, this uh, week here, um, but we're going to hire an outside consultant to kind of help us really strategize because we don't have a strategy other than we partner with really great partners. But I think we need to go a little deeper um, as we look at international, but I think Asia will be next. Okay, got it. What, what's your what's your appetite for growth, Daryl, beyond the, the 12 states and how many locations? <laughs> well, we they want everything. <laughs> <laughs> They want yes. as much as they can get. That is absolutely right. And, and you know, that's that's driven by wanting to change people's lives, literally. Like, the more territories we get, the more opportunities uh, we, we can present to people. And, you know, it's really letting people feel feel what Dave's is truly about. You know, uh, Dave Kapushian talks about his food on, you know, it, it's not so much of making people love the food, but the food putting a smile on people's faces when they eat it. And, you know, my first day training with Dave, my first day, uh, within the first hour, Dave walked in and I was like, man, I saw him on YouTube and he walked up to me and he goes, you're the Popeye's guy. And I said, you know what, man, I'm the Dave's guy. I'm here for Dave's. And, he, you know, we we're talking about how things are, you know, being done. And I said, I want to learn you. I want to learn your vision. And I want to be able to expand that and spread that uh, with everything we get. And at the time, we were just thinking of San Diego. Right. And now we get to spread that across the U.S. And it's it's a blessing. And we love Carolyn and her team for helping us get there. But we we plan to get as much as we can, you know, out of it and be partners with everybody. It's, it's really just spreading them. That's nice. And and I think, you know, at a, at a franchisor level, Carolyn, you recognize that the multi-unit operators don't just all have to be into Dave's all in. Right. There are other other brands. So you're supporting uh, really a, a real estate platform that helps those multi-unit operators run their businesses more effectively, I think, right? Because then they can spend more time with Dave's. Yeah, I, I think if I'm following you, right, I'm not sure if I understood correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. So uh, basically you're acknowledging the fact that your franchisees have investments in other brands yes. and the investment that you've made from a technology perspective is helping them succeed across, but obviously optimizing and protecting their business risk in, in other areas. Well, I think 
that um, the systems and processes and technology we have at Dave's certainly helps them with their Dave's growth. I don't know that it's really um, helping them in other businesses. I don't think it over, you know, they cross over. Yep. Yep. Okay. No, that makes sense. A uh, question that just came in, um, consistency of, of food product and product quality and, and culture. How do you, how do you maintain that? Not just domestically, but also your plans for international Carolyn? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm going to say that, um, Dave's is extremely easy. It is simple and it's easy. And that's why it, it makes it easy for us to make sure we have consistency across the world. But I also say that Dave's has the best training system I have ever been involved in. It is unbelievable, the training and then the field support that we give our franchisees is again, unparalleled to any brand I've been involved with. So there is so much support out there to help franchisees operate this very simple business. And that's really, that's really all it is. Taj, can I add to that? If Please you don't do, mind, yeah. yeah. Carolyn is absolutely right. And, you know, I think in, in creating that consistency, it's important for our team members to engage into the training, right? How many times have we seen in our career where you give an employee a book to read of standard operating procedures and do they read it? Uh, or are they skimming? And then watching a video, well, our training system that our, our corporate team provided is extremely entertaining, engaging. How can you not pay attention? Uh, it, it's very modern. I've never seen anything like it in my career. Uh, it's not just informative, but it's fun and it keeps them locked in and engaged and they want to go do it. Uh, so, you know, that that consistency stems from the training and then the follow-ups with it. So they make they make the training from a day-to-day -day, uh, new hire feel like it's a grand opening training uh, with the amount of effort and energy that they put into the training videos. So top-notch for sure. Well, that's good. Um, as as you have, have now grown, Daryl, you've got, I mean, you started off with just a handful of locations. You're in 12 states. Uh, talk a little bit about the technology and the, and the tools you're using to be able to, to manage all the, the real estate that you're managing and all the locations that you have in your system? Well, we do have a great platform called Leasecake that makes <laughs> things uh, a lot easier. Uh, it aggregates, right? Because we have leases in different cities, different states, um, timelines, the notifications, amazing. The organization is very helpful and beneficial to especially us with the leases that we have across the board. You know, understanding clauses in the leases and making it extremely user friendly and easy to find things uh, whenever you're looking for it. You know, there's a lot of times where things come up and you know rent rent changes right uh, here you get notified ahead of time and it's really organizing um as far as other platforms that we utilize our corporate team does a great job of testing these platforms and presenting them to us so that we can use it with our teams and, and in the different markets so the, the the support that carolyn is talking about it's real and uh it helps us be able to expand and be consistent throughout so wow no, that's good. That's good to hear. So, uh, Daryl, who is who's on your real estate team? Uh, from the Dave's team or us? No, just a... just you. Yeah, just the the team at Cluckin. I'd love to hear a little more. So we have brokers uh, in every different market. It's not just one broker across the board for us. Again, we need people who know the market, and we actually don't just select our brokers ourselves. We run it through the Dave's Hot Chicken real estate team you know, and vet them out. We we talk to them together as well as our operating partners. And I think that's also a benefit, a benefit of having our operating partners local. They've been working with these brokers as well, or they know of them, you know, with their other concepts. So it's, we have brokers in every different market. Got it. Got it. What other technologies are you leveraging? And maybe those brokers are using their own proprietary systems. Um, is there anything you can share there? I know our real estate team uses site Zeus that helps us with uh, site selection. Um, you know, as far as like the other technologies, that's the, the, the brokers that really do that, you know, as they look for sites and present them to us. Uh, we, we go old fashioned too. just drive around, do a site tour and look for signs that say available and call 
the broker that's listed on that site. You know, a lot of we we use every avenue possible to find the right locations, and then we present it to our real estate committee from the Dave's team. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, because it's a related question on finding space. Do you? And this might be you know very specific to uh, a particular use case, but apartment buildings, multifamily. Um, you know, is there one specific driver that outweighs others? Like great density of of population, or is it more? Yeah, than that? I've seen in just our San Diego market alone, we have different varieties, and it's pretty consistent, um, regardless of whether it's a destination site or a residential site. Uh, you know, of course, you'll see. Uh, consistent sales throughout the residential sites as those are people that are there every day. But those destination sites have big spikes, you know, and at the end of the year throughout, they they stay pretty consistent throughout. So it's really just understanding who's in the area um, as far as is there one that prioritizes over the other. I think it's just being present and understanding the, the traffic flow there and then understanding where people go to. Where are these people going on a daily basis um, before we make the site selections. Uh, prioritizing, I don't think we choose like apartment complexes versus steady homes. I think just as long as there's people there and they're the people that uh, are, who are going to our restaurants or we feel that they may be going to our restaurants with the income and the demographics that we're looking for. Okay. Yep. Nice. So Carolyn, you're, you're head of real estate, Dan, and he's probably on the go all the time. So related you know, what, what kind of support does your real estate team provide? Uh, share, you know, two, three, you know, ideas that, that are really working for you all. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, our real estate team physically sees every site that is presented to Dave's. We don't um, accept any site that has not been seen by someone on our real estate team. Yeah. And sometimes we go out and see a site a couple of times just so we can really understand it and be able to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing a good um, job selecting real estate. But um, we support our franchisees in uh, giving them um, all the experience that we've had. We have a very experienced real estate team and that know the areas that they are supporting franchisees in. They can, you know, leverage that experience. Um, but it is really the onus to select the real estate and find it is on the franchisee working with their local broker. So like I said, we're, we do support them, but we don't find the real estate for them. Um, so that's, I mean, Daryl, is that kind of how you feel? A hundred percent. The communication is very key, right? So whenever we're presenting sites to the real estate committee to approve, um, we want to make sure we're, we have our batting average up, right? So we have bi-weekly calls with our real estate team to make sure that every site that's being presented has been looked at all different angles. We visited together multiple times and we do, uh, we fill out our real estate committee presentation uh, by doing competitive site surveys and looking at all the angles. So the, the support is definitely there from the real estate team and uh, the communication is very key, right? So that they're very honest both ways, us and them, in saying, you know what, maybe we don't need to spend more time on this site. Let's look at this site, which gives us a better chance of getting approval as it's more like gravitating towards our guests and, and it has a better chance for success, not just for today, but in the long run as well. So support definitely there. Okay. Yeah, good to know. Um, you had used this term like turning no's into yeses the franchisor's perspective and, and having them see those locations. Um, you, you expand on, on what that means. Did you make some selections that you weren't sure would work out? Uh, and, and how did that, how did that change? Well, well, yeah, Carolyn actually helped us. Carolyn actually helped us turn those into yeses. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's going to visiting the site, being there in person, right? You can't really make, um, a decision on a site off of a piece of paper or a marketing brochure, right? These marketing brochures are, they give you what you want to, to hear, what they want you to hear or see. Uh, but being present, feeling that energy, the energy is huge with Dave's. What is that energy like in the area? And who who are the people there? And, and is this site, maybe, maybe the site wasn't good for a different concept. Maybe it was the concept that wasn't good for the site. And maybe Dave's brings a different type 
of energy around that one building, that real estate. So being present in it together with the real estate team from Dave's has helped us turn no's into yeses. And so I, I just want to say too, you know, when you're a brand new brand, you have zero history to go on. Mm -hmm. And so you're only relying on what you know from other brands you've worked with. So I would say in the very beginning, we're a lot more cautious when selecting real estate because we have nothing to base it on. And so in the beginning, I would say that um, franchise partners might bring a site that they really, really, really love. And we just don't see it. We don't, we don't really understand it. And we might say, no, we don't, we don't think that will be a good one. And they persist and we go out, we spend more time at the site, we listen more to the franchisee, and we can turn it into a yes, just by understanding it more. So again, going back to how important it is to have franchise partners that know their territory. That's, I think, the, the most single most important um, tool you have in determining whether the real estate is going to be good or not. I don't think we have many turning no's into yeses today because we're, we have 218 restaurants open. So we really understand now what we're looking for. We feel very confident on, um, you know, understanding sites. So we're, we're doing great now. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely learned in the process. And yeah, the it was a learning curve, learning sure. curve. Were there any surprises, Daryl, in terms of some of the real estate that you looked at and said, I'm not really sure this is going to work. And then, boom, you 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 saw like growth. Were there any surprises, like in a, in a positive way? Some of the intangibles of what Dave brings. You know, I, I think because of how frequently we, we communicate about sites, um, Usually when we're all saying, ah, it's not going to work out, we, we pass. And some of the best deals we have are the deals we don't make. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's that's been a key factor, too, with us. So, um, no, I think with the communication and the due diligence put into the real estate process, we're, we're really confident when we make site selections and open up our doors for business. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. It's you're you're thoughtful, you're purposeful. There's a commitment to to do the research in advance you're partnering with strong multi-unit operators all of those ingredients i think are again a testament to uh, the leadership that that you all have put in place so that's that is wonderful um here's a question that came in about training let's let's go back to training a little bit about lms systems um carolyn What's what kind of systems do you use? How highly do you value them from a training perspective? I know we touched on that earlier. So we use um, Player Link, which houses all of our training materials. So um, you use an iPad in the store. The trainees, uh, you know, log into this um, iPad and they can do all of their certifications on the iPad. But as far as the actual materials, they have all been created in house. We just uh, finished creating all of these unbelievable training videos. I, I can't tell you how good they are. I think these are gonna live forever and ever out there and people are gonna use us as a study someday on these training videos. But um, all of the training materials have been done in-house, but we we um, activate them or distribute them, I guess, uh, through player link, through iPads. Got it. Daryl, anything you wanna add? No, I think has been great. Uh, they do a great job of updating the system and notifying us if there's anything changing. So their link has been great. The, these training videos are, they're, they're very entertaining, very educational, like nothing I've never seen before. It's, it's, uh, they they did a really good job with it. So that's good. And the best, just, the and just a, one other thing about training and going back to how simple our brand is, um, the, uh, manager certification is only two weeks. And, and I think uh, it, it's, you could do it in one week. When I was in training, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I, I got everything I needed in one week, but it's only two weeks. And then when we open a new restaurant, we have a team go out and train uh, a, a whole team for a restaurant in four days and we open. So that's how simple it is. So walk me through that again, four days from opening. Four days prior to opening, we have a team come in and, and we hire up to 100 people 
for new restaurant openings. So we'll come in and we'll get a hundred people ready to go in four days. How does that compare with other brands? I mean, I got to believe that that they're, they're doing something similar or, or not? Um, this is the shortest I've ever, I've ever encountered. I've mm. been with other brands and it was always, um, uh, was longer to get people trained, especially the manager certification. You know, most brands are like four to six weeks and we're two weeks. <laughs> Could be one. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you all thinking about, or do you have an opinion about ghost kitchens? I know that was a, that was a thing. And now people are being a little bit more cautious, Carolyn. Yeah, I have an opinion. Um, no, uh, <laughs> we, we have one ghost kitchen that we tested and it's, it's a failure. Um, so no, it's not something we're looking at. No, people need to experience Dave's. I mean, you know, just look at how unique the, the signages and the experience. I mean, every store has its own personality. So. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't want to, I want to say that never ever to a ghost kitchen. What I'm saying is it's not a priority for us. I think we might have opportunities come up where it might make sense in a, in a very dense market. And we want to split, you know, we have two very high volume stores. We're really not there yet in our growth. But it's not a strategy for us. Yeah, got it. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of folks that are selling chicken sandwiches of all different types and flavors. Who's your biggest competitor? Which one are you looking out for? Or are you so different? You really don't have competitors. So I say we, we're so different. Um, there are no national hot chicken with our quality hot chicken um, that we would consider a competitor. We do have some regional competitors out there, depending on, you know, on where you are in the country. Um, but yeah, I, I, I say that the chicken sandwich at Wingstop or the chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A is not a competitor to Dave's chicken sandwich. Good answer. That, that makes a lot of sense. After my medium Dave's, <laughs> yeah, I would say... There's nothing like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Um, let's talk about pain points, operational pain points. Maybe Daryl, you can answer this. You know, yeah. the biggest the biggest things that keep you up at night. You know, I think it's just making sure that we're constantly evolving, um, constantly working to improve the operations and just hearing our guests out and hearing the team out, you know. There's always ways to improve. Uh, and I think that's what makes Dave's unique as well, right? Uh, it showed its ability to be versatile um, from the way we operate to the way we we have the guest experience. So I think just finding ways to improve, finding ways to make us as efficient as possible and enhancing the best guest experience out there. Okay, good. So let's talk about sustainable growth, quality and consistency. Um, I mean, how, how do you, is it, is it just as simple as training and you got a really good supply chain? Uh, Daryl, why don't you take that one? Yeah. So, you know, sustainable growth, um, the simplicity of Dave's menu, the simplicity of Dave's operation allows for that. Uh, it's easy. It's repetitive, but it's easy. Um, I, I've, you know, the, the skews from ordering, you know, to, to just going through the whole operations in the back of house, it's, it's very simple. And that allows for the consistency, the growth, the quality. How can you mess it up when it's that easy, right? Uh, are we perfect? No, but we're good. We're great. And so, you know, it's just the simplicity of it helps us be able to sustain and grow, especially at the pace that we're growing. Nice. Carolyn? Yeah, I mean... Uh, the same thing. It, it is simple. Um, as far as distribution, we, we've we had uh, nationwide distribution since day one with our partner. So we have had zero issues there. Um, we don't even have any issues internationally. Um, it, it, it's simple. There's, there's few SKUs, you know, and it makes it very easy. But, you know, if you're growing with a very strong foundation, which is what we have, with a brand that has a very good return on investment and the franchisees are making money and you're partnered with great franchise partners, fast growth is good. You can do it. 
Yep. Yep. That makes sense. There, there are many franchisors that are still out there that just, it has not quite clicked your idea about people and success and growing. Um, it's more of the, Hey, congratulations. You know, you've got a commitment to open up five locations. Let me know when the opening date is and, you know, send me the royalty check. So it's like, there's something that I think is now changing and you all are really I think, leading, leading that, uh, that movement. Cause obviously times have changed and good enough's not good enough anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. The deal. So, um, Daryl, let's, let me ask you this question here as we, as we wrap up near the top of the hour, we probably have time for a few more questions, but, um, you know, are there things, you know, as a founder of, of our solution of Lease Cake, are there things that we should do that we can do better or improve upon? Why don't you share with me some, some ideas? For Lease Cake as a whole, or just as you, you, you plan to grow and get your brand awareness out there? I think uh-huh. it's important to understand who you're, you're pitching your product to and then who's utilizing your product, understanding how they're utilizing it in in making sure that you're providing the answers to their questions, right? And then answering your own questions. You didn't become a founder unless you had a question on what people need. And you found that answer with Lease Cake. You know, we've all been in the industry and had questions on how we can make things better. And you found a product, you found an answer to people's questions. And I think just constantly um, growing and developing to that, you know, there, there's always going to be ways to find to make your product, find a way to make your product better and accessible to people too. So. I appreciate that. Yeah. It is, uh, it is like reinventing a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I was part of Popeye's when they had their craze, you know, with the chicken sandwich. And uh, I was actually one of the first questions Bill Phelps asked me, whose chicken sandwich is better? And (laughs) uh, no bias, man. Dave's has seven different heat levels. You could get a different heat level every day of the week. So Dave's and the juiciness of the tender, it's, it's, yeah, unmatched. So how many more levels do I have to go from medium? Hot, extra hot Reaper. All right. So it's going to be hot next time. And then uh, sign that contract. (laughs) That's good. Well, you know, Carolyn, I'm so glad that we had a chance to meet. And that was the serendipitous moment in a hotel lobby where you and and Bill Phelps were walking by. And I mean, he's such a respected, revered leader in the industry. and, And for him to be one of the very first guys that said, Dave's has a an absolute uh, winner here. And so the fact that he joined the team, how long had you worked with uh, with Bill before? So, you know, I knew Bill when I was at Blaze, but we really didn't interact too much. Um, but then, um, I, this is a funny story. I actually was at a Wetzel's Pretzels convention because I was thinking about becoming a Wetzel's franchisee. This is while I was at Blaze. And I heard that Bill was looking at another brand called Dave's Hot Chicken. And I was like, well, if Bill's looking at it, I want to be a part of it. I mean, this guy grew, you know, Wetzel's and then Blaze. So I approached him and said, can I be a part? Can I put some money into this new thing, Dave's? He goes, sure. He let me put it just a little bit in. But I'd never seen the product, heard of it, nor tasted it. But I trusted Bill Phelps. So then when I left uh, Blaze and I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do next and he was hounding me to get involved with uh, Dave's and I said, I I just need a break. But then he said, well, why don't you be a franchisee? I said, okay, I'll be a franchisee. So, um, you know, talk about relationships with people and people you trust. I just knew that if Bill Phelps was going to be involved, I wanted to be involved in some way. So, and it's panned out. (laughs) it's a it's a people business it's a relationship business yep you want to you want to get together and spend more time with people you trust and you enjoy that's that's wonderful um what advice uh would you impart on on me and our team as we continue to build and transform business you know i'll just piggyback onto what daryl said i mean you know lease kate came about because you found a need that wasn't being filled. And I think that, 
you know, as you grow, you just continue to get feedback from your customers on, you know, what could be done better? What else do they need? Is there something else that might, you know, there might be a gap or a, a hole that you could fill? That would be my, my recommendation. We are on the same page. We are absolutely on track. And we love these conversations, love spending time with, with our customers. We also have very dear core values as well as you can imagine, which is trust and empathy and curiosity and candor and center on the customer. I learned so much when I had spent a decade at Disney. You talk about customer experience, you talk about relationships. Uh, we carry that with us here as well. So I'm so excited and so glad that you guys were able to share your story. I mean, you're both franchisees, yeah. you know, you both had leadership roles. And I think, you know, you're changing the world of, of great chicken sandwiches, hot chicken sandwiches. Um, really, really pleased. And, and thank you so much for your time. Any parting comments, any last comments, Daryl, you want to make? Uh, I'm going to go off of what Bill Phelps tells us. Great brands are built on great stories through great people. And that's what we live by. So I'm going to write that down, Carolyn. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Daryl and, and say that they're opening uh, their first store in Atlanta next week. And they've actually partnered with Usher. This is a big thing. Oh, my and God. It's, um, right. it's, it, it's truly going to be one of the best openings ever. So hats off to him. And thank you so much, Taj, for having me on. It, this was really enjoyable. I appreciate it very much. And uh yeah, thank you so much. No, you're you're welcome. When we heard the news, and um, Andrew Fugali was on the phone with me, and his phone was blowing up, and he stayed on the call, and I said, "Hey, Andrew, what's going on?" He said, "Well, the news about Usher opening his first day is that was that in Conyers, Georgia." Yeah, Conyers. Yeah. So, so I told I told Andrew, I said, "Oh my God, this is great! Not only is Dave's Hot Chicken a customer, but we're one degree of separation from Usher." So, really? <laughs> well, I mean. All I mean, Andrew's yes. got to do, all yes. Andrew's got to do is introduce us and then, you know, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it. Well, you guys are doing absolutely the right thing. Stay on that modern leading edge approach. It is, it's definitely a people business. Your brand, your reputation is certainly seen as a leader amongst your peers and uh, it's, it's simply an honor. So thank you again. And we will talk with you soon, I'm sure. Take yes. care of travels, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Carolyn. Bye, Carol.